the last few weeks, I've been talking a lot about the VHSL, the Virginia High School League. It's a topic that I've talked about over the years. And the reason why I've talked about it is I have a long experience with um, state basketball tournament, regional basketball tournament in Northern Virginia, Northern region and beyond. I went to the state tournament, I think every year between 78 when Robinson first went, maybe 79 to 19, 2008, maybe I stopped going regularly. Um, and then, but I've been following it pretty closely from afar and, and I still go to games when I can. I don't go to the whole tournament. Nobody does. But one of the reasons why is um, uh, how high school sports has suffered in Virginia is because there's so many classifications. And, you know, we're at six now. So when I bring this up, I'm always a little bit surprised by people who defend it. First of all, a lot of people defend it who are really young and don't really remember what happened a long time ago. Um, I'm, I'm not saying you can't learn the history, but I'm not sure if many of them even know the history of, of what happened before, whether, you know, how the games were, how the, the attendance was. Um, I do, and I do want to be cognizant of the fact that things have changed and maybe high school sports means less, but High school sports are still doing well in other places, and, they, and it, it still does well in places in Virginia as well. So I'm not sure if it can be writ written off that easy. But a lot of times I just hear when I talk about the VHSL, nothing's going to happen, which is true. If, if we don't try to make things happen, that is true. Um, but also just about you know the, the principals, the DSAs, uh, you know, they're, they're not going to vote to change the status quo. And th they are entrenched interests. Um, if you're DSA, your principal, and your team can win more trophies, win more states, it's good for you. It's good for your job. It's good for your community, you think. Um, so, you know, obviously you're, you're going to defend um, uh, that system. So it's going to take some leadership or kind of like a, a bully pulpit figure from, from beyond. Like I, I talk a, a little bit about uh, Dr. Billy Hahn, who's the VH, it's VHSL director. And like I said, seems like a good guy. And I know he doesn't have the ultimate power um, over these decisions. It comes from the schools. But, you know, you're hoping we can get um, some leadership and so on to push for some change. And I can, I think if we do that, I think the, the quality of our sports is going to improve. And you have more people, more neutrals other than me, who actually care a lot about the, um, the games and, and the sports. Just, just to kind of recap what how we got to where we are. 1970s, when we first went to three classifications for boys, each for boys and girls. I'm not sure if the girls hit when they started having state competitions, but generally it was single A, through single A, double A, and triple A, triple A being the biggest. Before that, I think we had four. I think it was one A, one B, one C, and, a, and one D, I believe. But anyway, 1970, it changed. And as I said, it was a golden year era of sports because first of all, you integrated sports, Girl sports came on, but we just had some great figures in 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 football and basketball in particular, but I'm sure in all sports. And I guess probably this is before a lot of our athletes started going to private school as well. That may have something to do with it. But 70s was a great year. In 1986, I believe, that's when football first went from three to six uh, classifications. Now, I, I, I'm unclear why they did this. When I interviewed... Um, um, Stonebridge coach, Mickey Thompson, legendary coach. He said it was because in football, if you lost your first couple games, you were out of it. There was no way into postseason. Football is not a tournament game because you can't play a lot of games to do to have tournaments. So you, you, you have to rest on regular season to determine the postseason drawings. So too many teams would lose early and their season was out. So Mickey felt like they went to six to, to give the school some chance. Um, you could lose some games and make it to the postseason. And now he said himself this year, you know, they went 0 and 4 early. He wasn't worried about it because he knows he only has to win two games to qualify for postseason. So I think football started that way. I think it's gone further than it, was, than it need, needed to be. Not only do they have six classifications, but other teams other than the district champs also qualify for the postseason. So we had a lot of ridiculous result uh, outcomes like winless teams and I think Cumberland qualifying for postseason. Um, in Loudoun, where they have five team districts and 10 team regions, teams are getting buys in the first round of regionals. And then in Prince William, of course, you have you have 18 team dis uh, regions, 18 districts. So it's very hard to qualify for postseason. So you have some interesting uh, things going on. Um, and, I, and I would argue un unfair with football. 
Well, in 2013, I believe all sports, uh, I, I wanted to say about 86, uh, Coach uh, Tompkins, I wrote something he had read on social media. Uh, coach Thompson is a legendary Northern Virginia football coach. He said it came down to the votes. The, the number of single A and double A schools outweighed the number of triple A schools. So the triple A schools had to agree uh, to the change. That that was his understanding of why um, there was impetus of a change in 1986 to go to six for football. Just the votes. The votes were with the, 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 the single A and double A schools. So in, in 2013, um, Mickey Thompson uh, said that all sports wanted six. If football can have six, all sports should have six. It wasn't one of these things where the population has grown, the number of schools have grown in the area. We should keep it proportion. No, it's just football has six, we deserve six. That's it. So we, we, we did, you know, so since then, we've had six classifications for all sports. And we've tweaked the regions around. Some have gone up and some have gone down. I know in, in Fairfax County, there were some five uh, classification schools, five being the second to highest, six being the highest. And they were in, and I know they went to six. They all went to six. So I know that, but there has been some tweaking. What's in the six classifications? Um, I don't know what um, latitude a school has to level up or down. I don't know that. Hopefully there's some, but that's the way it's been since. And that's why like in basketball and many other sports with better tournament games, um, the regular season means even less now than it's ever meant um, because you, you have the tournament. But not only do you have the tournament, you have six classifications. So it's it's truly uh, a, a, a time when there's really few elimination points. It's really watered down the competition. And, and even the postseason, uh, we spend most of the time with the best teams having to avoid playing each other. So we end the season without knowing who's the best. Um, even though this, this is, these are not the faults of the schools. They can only play who's in front of them. And most of these schools, they play tough out-of-conference schedules, knowing that they're not going to really play tough teams until the state playoffs. So if you have a good team, you will try to get them beat up out, out of jurisdiction or at least out of your district to get them ready for postseason. Like in, but in basketball this year, for example, John Marshall won all their state games by over 50 points. They're, they're, double, they're uh, class two in the old – years all the richmond teams would be in the triple a which was the highest um uh, woodside is a dominant i think they went back to back in boys uh five and um, many would argue they're the best team in the state uh, but they're not in six they're in five um so who knows whether they can be a great south lakes team um hampton uh the four champ you know they beat patriot it was a six finalist hampton in the old days would have been in the old central region and triple a so they would have been in the, in the top classification. So, uh, you know, in basketball, it's it's pretty simple. The, the city urban schools of Richmond, uh, Tidewater, Roanoke, Danville, some of those schools now, their schools aren't that big. So they're not, uh, if it's based, based on school population, they are not gonna be in the highest classifications if you do it um, granularly and you have a lot of classifications. And those that are, that's a demographic that historically has been very, very challenging, very good in basketball. So you've taken a lot of your best teams out of your top competitions. Not sure how it works in the other sports as much. Um, I can imagine it's probably different in every sport. Some sports, uh, it, it, it's based on wealth, like the, um, the cross country and the tennis and the golf and the soccer. It seems like the wealthier schools have the stronger teams, but I, I'm not sure how that goes. Um, football, this is two years of this in a row where at the end of the season, we have three or four incredibly good teams and we don't even know who's best. I know this year in football, the historic freedom team went back to back in six. Amazing team won all the games by lots of points. Um, and then you have um, uh, Maury, who some think is the best team in the state. They're in five. In the old days, Maury would have been triple A as freedom. They would have played in the final, but we don't ever know. Phoebus is another team that went back to back, amazing team. And they would also have been in AAA in the old days and they would have been playing against the toughest teams. So, um, you know, we're, we're getting, we're not getting to see these matchups. So a lot of times when it comes down to economics, you'll hear people saying, we can't afford this and that. Well, you're taking away your marquee games. So you're taking away the games that would have had the, the best uh, attendance. So if you, if, you, if you always make the argument that we can't afford it, well, you're not giving yourself a chance. If this week South Lakes and Woodside were playing because 
you know, going from six classifications to three, it's only one more game, guys. Uh, we would have had the South Lakes Woodside game this week. That probably would have drawn, uh, I, I can assure you, a huge crowd. Um, so that's the way it goes. You know, and also the problem is, you know, we can't tell for historical purposes. We don't know who's the best. We don't know how to regard these teams. I remember uh, a month or two ago, I was trying to put together a list of basketball champions for our social media, Nova Legends. And it's impossible. There's so many champions. I can't even, I didn't even, I, I couldn't even put it in a graphic for so many champions. Um, I can name offhand all the champions. I think I could do it. I'm not going to do it because you're going to accuse me of reading. But between like 73 and 2008, I could probably name 90% of the state champions and for AAA, for boys. For AA, I could name, you know, uh, programs that won lots of them, like Martinsville in the 80s, Robert E. Lee in the 80s, um, and then for single A, you know, like Drury Mason in the 80s and um, Cumberland in the 80s, um, Council, you know, whatever. I could name it. But now I have, I have no idea. There's just too many champions. No one remembers any of these champions except for people in those communities or maybe the teams that happen to play them. But we've, you know, we've given away all this historical importance of these championships after, after the game is played. Um, and I've said this before, we've really created competitions that just has the interest of supporters. So if you happen to be at a school that benefits, you may like it and it's great. And it, you may go to the games, but the neutrals are the fans of the sport. They, you know, they, they probably have a, uh, just a casual interest and they may watch some games if they happen to know the coach or the teams, but there's that, there's very few hardcore fans in the sport is, is general. It's hard. I remember I, I, I was asked to be on the, um, the, the, uh, um, the committee of picks uh, nominees for the Robinson where I went to school hall of fame committee. And I was surprised Ed Henry had never, had wasn't in the hall of fame at Robinson. I mean, <laughs> Ed Henry, you know, he was a coach, the adversary and remember the Titans, he was coaching in Marshall in that movie, but he's just a great coach from Annandale, um, Marshall, Robinson. I'm not sure if he ever won a state championship. I think he did, but I know at Robinson, he got to the States. He won a region, but he never won a state championship. Well, look, before, when there was only three state champions every year, it was very hard to win a state championship. It was hard to get out of your district because only one team get out of your district. I remember when I was in high school, we were nine and one two years and didn't go to region. We had Chris Warren and Joel Dempsey and Coach Henry. So, you know, when, when you say no one's won a state title, you know, there's, it means there, it's different meanings in football before 86 and in basketball before 2012. Again, with South Lakes, someone was surprised that South Lakes had never won a state championship as a school until recently, until this, this year. Well, no one from Northern Virginia won a state championship between 1981 and 2007. Zero school, 2008, zero schools. That includes South Lakes. South Lakes wasn't even open until 77. So we got to remember it's 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 different. And that history, I, I think, I'd argue, it's important. So I think it's easy to think that it all comes down to, you know, the population of the school or the state, number of schools, that should determine that. Well, I don't really, it sounds commonsensical, but I don't think that's what really is going on here. I think what you really want to do is you really want to create a, a competition that so teams are playing against teams generally in their in their league. You know, you're 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 not, you're not you don't want to guarantee trophies necessarily, even though we'd like some a reasonable chance to win some hardware. But the key is, is that the games that they're playing are reason reasonable competition. They're not always blowouts. And you don't have to travel very far to do it. Um, to play games because that's that's a cost, and also the games mean more if, if they happen to be, you know, rivals in your area. And again, I, further, you know, it should be rivalry should be expected. So when you're thinking about how many classifications, it's not just whether you have a reasonable chance to win titles. Uh, I, I mean, I guess that could be a factor, but it's basically you want to have you know reasonable level of competition, competition between schools like. Teams in Loudoun shouldn't have a greater chance to win than Fairfax County, other than whether they're, maybe they're, they're better sports programs. But, you know, those are the kind of things that you want to think about in terms of how many classifications you, you, you have. Um, and I, you know, you don't want to quickly uh, do it just because 
it was three in 86. Well, the population schools were bigger. So therefore we should have more classifications. No, uh, you know, our teams getting the chance to play against teams locally that are, have the same, um, you know, uh, you know, chance of winning. And again, a lot of that's going to rely upon the leadership at the schools, the DSAs, the coaches at the schools. So that's just the demographic, how wealthy a school is could determine in certain sports how good they are. Or, you know, maybe if it's urban, that may help you in certain sports like basketball, where right. urban kids have done well in basketball o over the years. So I think there's a lot um, that goes it goes into that. Um, I don't think it's just the population. Um, you know, so another thing you got to remember, small changes in population aren't that meaningful. If, if a school has 2,000 people and another school has 2,400 people, that's not that big a deal over time. Management of the school is going to be more important than, I guess, the demographic. But those little small changes don't mean a lot. Do you, do you want little counsel from Appalachia playing against um, uh, Madison from Vienna? No. I mean, that's, that, that, that's too profound of a difference from for money sports. So you, you're going to want to have some division. Um, I think in most sports and almost all sports, maybe except for basketball, might be different, I guess. But, um, you know, it's, it's the small differences aren't going to make that big a difference. Um, so that should be taken into consideration when you think about the number of classifications that you had. You know, whether you need three or four, um, you know, I, I would argue probably you only need three because you, because you got to remember, if you have one classification, just one, all right? The good news, the bad news is, is that the larger schools are probably going to dominate most sports. That's bad. Um, maybe individual sports aren't harmed much, but, you know, it's, it's going to be tough. But, you know, the good, uh, the good thing about one classification is it's easy to make districts because it can be all based on location or rivalries. You know, so it's very easy to do certain things with one classification. Um, you know, you're going to have great attendance for the big for the for the big championships. By the time you get all the way there, you know the uh, suspense is building. So there's a lot to be said for, for that. Um, you know, and you, you know you're not going to have a situation where certain regions have ten teams in a region like Loudon, and certain like Prince William, they almost have ten in the district. So it's that's not fair, right? You know, that's avoided with smaller numbers of classifications. When you have many, many classifications, so let's say you go all the way to 10, just for argument's sake, it's hard to find teams in that area to make districts because you're not, you know, but if you separate things and you try to get um, too granular, too many, it's going to be hard to find teams. So the more classifications you add, the harder it is you're going to have to have districts um, with teams locally. And the greater disparity you're going to have between different districts sizes around the state and also region sizes. That's something you might want to take into consideration. So as you move up to six, things get complicated from where they were from three. It's harder to have local rivalries involved in, in competitions. It's going to be hard to have districts that, that are that are local, and you're going to have you're going to have some travel. So unless you do you know certain things like they have com combined districts where threes and fours and fives might be in the same district. And they use PowerPoints to do uh, postseason. You're going to have to if you do that. So just because you get more classifications, you don't get more fairness. You, you lose fairness sometimes between jurisdictions, Prince William and Loudon. And then, you know, and then you're going to have, um, you know, more. Uh, you're going to have more. Uh, uh, I'm out in Loudon County now. You have five team districts. I go in some of these schools. They have so many district. Um, uh, banners, there's room for nothing else in the gym. Well, of course they want district. There's only five teams in their district. You know, the you know, the more classifications you have, you have less fairness between different schools. So you may have more fairness in that the schools are competing against the same size, but you, you lose other types of fairness. Also, look at Lewis, John Lewis in Springfield. John Lewis, I think it's about 1,700. I just moved to Loudoun County. That's the same size as the schools out of here that are in five. Now, John Lewis went to the state final in class five soccer a few years ago and lost. And, and when they moved to six, because I think all Fairfax County, Arlington, Alexander, we're all sixes now. They got to the state final again last year in soccer. So it doesn't matter five and six. It's all, it's, it's pretty much the same at, at that point between five and six. But generally Lewis has to compete against six and all these teams in Loudoun County have to compete against fives. And they have these little tiny districts. 
don't tell me that's fair to Lewis. So I think when you get, if you, if you get laser focused and, you know, trying to get every school the same size, um, other types of unfairnesses are going to emerge. You don't, if you have three classifications, you're going to have less of that. Yes, you're going to have some, you're going to have situations where in class, in the highest classifications, let's say AAA, like in the old days, you may have um, Robinson High School, you know, with 2,800 students in their high school, and you may have Lewis with 1,800 students. Yeah, you're going to have those kind of situations. Um, but I, I still think you're better off in so many other ways, you're going to you're going to respect those old rivalries that are that are near and dear to, to our hearts. Um, you know, you're going to have less travel between games. You're going to have less fairness between jurisdictions. Loudon is not going to be treated like some kind of golden child, whereas Lewis and the smaller schools in Fairfax County are going to get a brunt of that. Um, I know the Appalachian schools, you know, they complain because, you know, they, they may have just, you know, a school that is 100 students and, and 500 students. That's a big change. That's five times. So obviously maybe at the smaller levels, the different uh, population levels probably means more percentage change. Uh, I still think three probably checks most of the boxes that you want. Four probably checks, it's going to check a lot more boxes than six in that, um, you know, you're going to be able to respect more rivalries. You're going to be able to have more fairness between jurisdictions. You're going to have more competition than six. So you're going to have some of these great rivalries, some of these great games that we're deprived of now in six. But I still think you, you probably accomplish all those things that you have with three. Now, one thing that we haven't talked about is can teams move up and down? Like, you know, should John Marshall, when they win by 50 in men's basketball with this AAU type team, should we have to put, put them up at the highest level or at least three? Um, I don't know. I, I think the way the rest of the world works in sports, we don't do, Americans don't do this, but the rest of the world in sports, when you win a division, you generally have to graduate to the next level. You know, we, they have relegation and promotion. That's the way the most of the world works. So you go to a higher division once you win your division. This is big in soccer, basketball, many sports around the world, team sports. You know, you do this. So that's, and that's a good thing. In America, we seem to want teams to be at the same level. Like our pro teams don't go up and down. It's just pro. You have to buy a franchise if you want to join that level. You can't win your minor league semi-pro and, and get to the NFL or, or the NBA or whatever. That doesn't happen. Even, but even in amateur sports, they have that. In America, we don't have that notion. But I think maybe we should look at if teams win their division, they should level up to the next uh, automatically. Now, you may say when high school teams, players graduate and, and it's different. Well, they'll, they'll probably end up being relegated back. But I think it'll be interesting to look at ideas like that, move teams up and down based on their um, success. Um, also, um, can can we change by sport? Now, I caused a big, um, you know, uh, argument discussion this week on our Nova Legends basketball by talking about Kentucky only has one basketball champion, and Del and that includes private. They go all the way, and Delaware only has one, which also includes private. So. You know, obviously their state tournaments are hugely successful because it means so much. In Kentucky, they have 16 different regions. Every region sends one team to the state, what they call Sweet 16, and that's a trademark of Kentucky. And then they all go and they and they play at the state tournament at Rupp Arena. The semifinals, this is crazy. You play semis in the final the same day. Can you imagine? They average for all those games 12,000. In Virginia, we couldn't even uh, we couldn't even dream of that. My guess is we probably average like 1,200. 10 times, that's my guess. Don't know for a fact. Uh, Delaware is the same. I mean, they don't get 12,000, but they got 5,000 and they sold out their state final. Virginia wouldn't even dream about that. What's interesting is in both those sports, Kentucky has six classifications for football. Six. I'm not sure what they have for most other sports. Delaware has three for football. So they, they, they changed by sport. I guess we used to do that. So maybe we should look into that. Maybe football needs six. I don't think they do, but maybe they do. Maybe they need six, but basketball surely doesn't. So maybe we can have different classifications uh, by sport. I don't know if that's discussed, but it seems uh, commonsensical. I just hope we are looking at what other sports do that makes it so successful. I know a lot of people don't care about this stuff because they've already moved on from, from basketball. And But I know if anything is going to be done, you have to kind of create a stir for next year because otherwise everyone gets kind of back into their um, 
into the rhythm and nothing ever changes. I just would hope one day, um, and I've talked about other um, issues that we have in our postseason. I do think if you worked on classifications, that would go a long way with increasing the interest in our sports. Uh, appreciate you always listening to this. Don't forget to subscribe and like and share. Not only share on YouTube, but on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you can share. Uh, until next time, thank you.